monitored when he launched his attack in that supermarket in Auckland on Friday afternoon. Phil Mercer reporting there. Now, scientists have found that tuna populations are starting to recover after years of overfishing. The numbers of yellowfin and bluefin are bouncing back. That follows the introduction of fishing quotas. However, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, which is publishing its so-called red list, says many other marine species are moving closer to extinction. Almost 40% of sharks and rays are now threatened, mainly due to overfishing. The uh, institution also says that 30% of 140,000 odd species of animal are also at risk of, risk of extinction. Let's talk now to our environment correspondent, Helen Briggs, who can tell us more. I mean, we've, we've talked a lot, haven't we, Helen, over the, uh, the last decade or so about the concerns about fish stocks. Tuna, one of those in particular concerns because it's such a popular fish. What's, what's turned this around? Is it just about conservation? Is it about change of diet? What, what, is it change of fishing methods? Well, this was highlighted 10 years ago by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. So they do this red list where they look at all these animals, plants, fungi around the world and see uh, what the status is for these species, which ones are, are getting closer to extinction. And when they look back in 2011, they found that big concern for all seven species of tuna. Um, and it really raised the alarm bells. So uh, people started to act on this and, and mainly um, fishing quotas, mainly concentration on sustainable fishing, crackdown um, on illegal fishing, and sort of concerted effort from scientists and from industry um, for tuna stocks. Of course, these are commercially harvested species. They're on the way to billions of people around the world. There is some incentive here to, to actually address this. And after a decade of strict fishing quotas, sustainable fishing, then we're seeing the signs of recovery. Now, they're not out of the woods yet um, by any means, but the four out of seven tuna species, and for some familiar names here that, that um, you know, we all know, yellowfin, albacore, bluefin, uh, they're starting to recover. Now, that's not um, all the way across the ocean. By and far, we're getting some recovery. So conservation groups say, uh, this is a, a sign that with concerted action, then conservation can work. But of course, there are many other species where things are, are looking dire. They're not looking so good at, as for tuna. Um, yeah, I was looking at some of the some of the um, stats the International Union for the Conservation of Nature has put out today. And one of the figures that's very striking is sharks and rays. A third were deemed threatened back in 2014. But that's actually got worse now. It's up to 37%. And again, it says, well, to be fair, not just fishing, but also some of the climate change activity that's reducing habitats and causing, obviously, problems about pollution, salination of water and all the rest of it. That's right, because obviously, you know, these species are sharing the oceans with the tuna, um, but they're faring very badly. One scientist told me that um, alarm bells couldn't be ringing louder now for sharks and rays. And there are hundreds of species of sharks and ray in the ocean, and they tend to get bad publicity, but they're really important species for the health of the ocean, and they're being hit hard. And, and the main factor is non-sustainable fishing uh, for their meat and for their fins, um, but other factors as well. So we get sharks that live around coral reefs, and they're particularly vulnerable to climate change, and other factors as well, like ocean pollution, are, are hitting them hard. And it's a much harder problem to tackle for sharks and rays than for tuna fish, in a way. Um, there, there have been some work and things like um, fishing quotas for sharks and rays, but for only a very small number mm. of them, mainly around the US and Australia. And, and that's having some effect. But by and large, for, for many of these species, um, things are looking very bad. So scientists are saying, you know, this is we've got to galvanise some support. We've got to get some action here for, for other things. And also very bad news for the Komodo dragon on mm -hmm. land. Um, this huge lizard, uh, three metres long, weighs 150 kilograms, and, and that lives on a few islands in Indonesia. Uh, and its forest habitat is being cut down. Uh, Savannah is at risk of fire. And now it's got this added threat. The IUCN is saying that its habitat uh, could shrink by a third in the next 45 years as sea levels rise with climate change. So... 
um, not looking good for the Komodo dragon and, and an illustration of, of many of the problems facing biodiversity around the planet. Yeah, lots for them to talk about the World Conservation Congress, which I think is taking place in uh, Marseille, isn't it, right at the moment. But presumably a lot of it end up about the organisations like this can can issue the warning bells, but it's still the policymakers who actually have to take the action. Well, they're going to be meeting over the next nine days in Marseille, uh, first meeting in five years of conservation groups, government ministers, and they're really trying to push for action on conservation. Uh, and the message really being that conservation work can work, but um, you need the political and scientific attention. So they're building support for the idea of protecting more land for nature. So this idea that we should support, protect 30% of our oceans, 30% of our land by 2030. And they ultimately want to have an agreement for nature akin to the Paris Agreement for climate change. So various proposals are being thrashed out in France, in Marseille, and that will feed into these very high profile summits we've got coming up on biodiversity and on climate change in Glasgow in November. Helen Briggs, our environment correspondent. Lovely to speak to you. Thanks very much. Now time for a look at the weather. Here's Louise Lear. Hello there. For much